So this is a pretty good psychological thriller. I'm talking about Missing. It's rated M. It runs for 111 minutes. And the internet, of course, is front and centre. Uh, and let me start by saying that appearances can be deceptive. And the starting point for this movie really is San Antonio in 2008, April the 13th to be precise. As caught on video camera, a father called James, played by Tim Griffin, is playing with his young daughter, June, Ava Lee. And... Then there's a trickle of blood seen coming from Father James's nose. Next thing you know, we're looking at James's medical history. Mother Grace, played by Nia Long, has dismantled James's accounts, and she and June, her daughter, have moved to Los Angeles. So James is no longer with us. And June, played by Storm Reed, now 18 years of age, is living alone and studying. So in other words, we saw her many, many years earlier, and now we're seeing her as a young adult. Mum, Grace, who's forged a promising new relationship with a new bloke, a Colombian called Kevin, played by Ken Leong, is constantly checking in on her daughter. June, being 18, I suppose, is dismissive. In short, she finds that her mum's protective nature is more than a little overbearing. And now, Mum and Kevin are travelling to Colombia for a few days. Grace, well, deposits some money in case of an emergency into the account, right? So, yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, and, all, 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 I mean, basically what happens is that all she as a daughter is interested in doing is partnering with her best friend, whose name is Vina, played by Megan Suri. Well, basically what happens is that June promises to pick up Grace and Kevin at the airport when they return, but neither of them shows up. And uh, you've got uh, June trying to track down her mother. She doesn't answer her phone or respond to text messages. It's then that uh, she turns to the internet to try to find her, and before long, the FBI gets involved. The plot thickens as June looks for her mum's digital footprint. So this showcases missing the remarkable power of technology and the internet. June's particularly adept at using it. She opens many, many doors, which leads down a dark and twisted path. Much of what we see is relayed to us via vision off a computer screen, uh, and many windows open on that computer concurrently. So uh, I reckon it works a treat in terms of the nature of this picture because it's so IT-based. And, uh, well, Reed really impressed me. I thought she was really strong in the lead. She does a lot of the heavy lifting, becomes a super sleuth, although... What she finds is far from pretty. What did you think of it, Jackie? Uh, missing. Yeah, I really enjoyed Missing. I'll, I'll say first off, it actually reminded me because of the way it's presented, you know, in the digital fashion, the online, and we've got everything from it's, it's all about what's on the screen. It's all about Google, Facebook, WhatsApp, Siri, live streaming and task rabbit and you know cameras and gps and everything like that but it's it's got the human element of course because there's the family situation and then it becomes a thriller mystery it reminded me of a film and i, I think it was about eight or nine years ago called unfriended which yeah. i think was um which was touted at the time as the first fully online you know or, or uh, um, feature film presented as being um fully done just on a screen so we're not seeing people in there uh, th that are not seen on a screen somehow which makes it sound really boring but it actually isn't i found it fascinating and the film missing as it delves into this um mystery thriller scenario which actually gets a little bit too complicated for me at the end but anyway that's fine i really enjoyed the pace of it because it's it's i i, I actually think it's quite a young film and it's got this fabulous fast furious online film the way you know the pace the the way they operate and the way it reveals nothing is secret it goes it delves right through i really enjoyed that fast pace and um uh, therefore i enjoyed the film never mm. bored never bored in it no well i i would totally agree with that i i think also the the interesting aspect of all of this is that a movie which you've said you know appeals to young people has got broader appeal than that because it's quite fascinating for, for us slightly oldies, shall we say, to appreciate how dexterous somebody can be on a keyboard and, you know, one, two, three, bang, you're into something that uh, you shouldn't be. And unfortunately, that, that's got the nefarious side to it, which is obviously what this movie is all about. Uh, Greg, what did you think of it? Uh, missing. 
Well, I enjoy it in, um, in spite of myself because this is one of those thrillers that um, plays out for those plays aimed at those Gen Xers who live their lives um, via social media, Facebook, and mobile phones um, rather than the real world. There, but it sort of slowly sucks you in with its build up of suspense and suspicion and wondering where it's going. Um, that's a sort of sequel to 2018's. Searching, which used the same sort of formula and plot, and it comes from the same writer and director um, um, as that Nathan Johnson and um, Will Merrick there, and it follows the same formula. I thought, I agree that Storm Reed was quite strong there um, as the heroine there who investigates everything online. Thinking of all the pre production work that must have gone in to set up all these screens and background things to go, go play out on screen there. Um, and it plays out sort of like in real time there on the screens there. Um, I thought Ke- Kevin Leong brought hint, su- subtle hints of, to his role that suggested he was not all he, he pretended to be there. And I liked um, Welcome to Almeida there as Harvey, the uh, man she um, hires online to investigate on the ground there a long way away. I think it worked. Sorry. You're very popular. Somebody's ringing you. Ring, 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 that's ring. Right. That's all right. Um, yeah, so I, I, I liked it and thought of, in spite of, in spite of myself going in there thinking, oh, here we go again. Um, and it's nothing to do with that 1982 thrill of the same name that starred uh, Jack Lemmon about that's a man looking for his um, missing son in um, sort of somewhere in um, South America. You raise an important question, though, here, Greg. In terms of names of films, is there a rule? I mean, do you have to wait? As, if you've got the name of a film that, was produced 20, 30 years ago, then obviously you've got a new generation, no problems. Is there any unwritten rule? Does anybody know in terms of having the name of something that's also named something else earlier? Is there a, a, a law of uh, whatever it is? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what it is, a time-based rule? or and, and is there some gatekeeper that prevents you from naming a film like another name or very similar, like copyright? No, no, because on IMDb, no. quite often you will see, um, it'll say something like, uh, missing 2023, and then in brackets, number three, that means that there's three films that year that has the name missing. Okay, fair enough. Now, I, I presumed as much, because obviously there, you know, there's not normally necessarily 20 or 30 years between them. So, Pete, um, yeah, did, did, did missing do it for you? Uh, reasonably well. Uh, just by the way, with titles for international releases for some films, they might change the title if there's another title, uh, if the same title has been used. But but no, there's no restriction or copyright, and uh, and we have many examples of films uh, uh, that have similar titles, and you have to differentiate between them. It's not always easy. Now, missing, yes, quite right. It's a a follow up to the film searching using computer screens, using social media to tell a story. Um, I think uh, this one is pretty good most of the time and is quite involving. I think there is a, uh, it slightly goes overboard uh, and, and has a few too many twists in the story uh, in the last third of the film. Um, so when it started off believably, it became somewhat unbelievable to me by the time we got to the resolution, uh, which was uh, to some extent fairly standard, but uh, was very much derivative um, of uh, throwing as much at the audience as possible. But nevertheless, yeah, Missing was quite well done. It's it's certainly watchable. And uh, uh, as a narrative, I hope we don't see too many more films like this because I think uh, it starts to wear out its welcome very quickly. But uh, yeah, I quite like Missing. Mm, I mean, it, it's sort of hitting, hitting it over the head a little bit with a, a wet lettuce leaf, though, though Pete. I, I, you, you, weren't, you weren't overwhelmed. I think that stories regarding the internet, I mean, they'll only continue to proliferate, though, won't, won't they? I mean, we're, we're talking AI and all sorts of other things that uh, come off the back of this. So uh, I, I don't know whether you're going to get your wish in terms of uh, uh, not too many more. What about you, Dave? Uh, is, did, you, did you pick it? Did you in any way think this was what's going down? No, definitely not. Um, I, th- I think this, these kinds of films are very interesting because they're, they're practically Murder, She Wrote or Agatha Christie using a computer. I think this film actually did it a lot better than films such as Dashcam um, that, that 
were good films, but didn't quite reach the levels that this one did. I do think, though, that Missing tripped itself up at the end. I thought it became just a little bit too unbelievable um, with the way that they kept the format going once June left her apartment. So I think that kind of tripped it up towards the end. I wish they had found a way where they could have found a resolve without that, because I think it really, really stretched the format towards the end. But look, the rest of the film was really good. I liked the twists and turns, but yeah, I just felt it tripped itself up at the end. De, Greg referenced Joachim de Almeida, or Almeida. I, I thought, you know, he was quite reasonable as uh, as middle-aged father in Colombia that grazed chances upon on the sort of equivalent of Airtasker, sort of quite a cheap resource and ally. Uh, and these days, you know, you can get most things on, on sites like Fiverr or whatever, and uh, this is a guy who becomes a bit of a sleuth. I, I quite liked his role. I thought Nia, Nia Long was reasonably credible as Grace, uh, another key character in this particular movie. I, I, look, I was quite invested in the, the whodunit plot. It's written and directed by Will Merrick and Nicholas Johnson. Quite a smart, savvy sort of piece of movie making. I, I agree with Jackie. I think it's it's certainly got a younger demographic in mind, but it's got you know it's it's got a bit of cross appeal given that uh, all of us are a little bit older than uh, twenty, shall we say? So let's get a score, Dave. What about you? Missing? We're talking M rated one hundred and eleven minutes. Uh, I'm giving it six out of ten. Okay, so that yeah, it's a, it's a sort of middling type mark. Uh, Peter, similarly. Yes, and by the way, uh, my comment is about uh, not making more films with that format. I have no problem using social media, but it's just that that, uh, that uh, visual format, I think, becomes very wearing after time. Uh, look, I agree. I give it a 6 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Greg King? 6 out of 10 for me as well. Wow, okay. Um, Jackie? Oh, I'm a little higher. I gave it 7 out of 10 purely because I was – it was – for entertainment, just entertainment. And yeah. um, But I do agree with Peter that, that I, I wouldn't want to see one of these every couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, seven and a half for mine for Missing. So somewhere between six and seven and a half. So it's a pretty reasonable sort of film and I think some people are going to particularly enjoy it.